Hey love, Shantara Capriere here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. In today's video, I will be teaching you all how to customize your own product labels. Quick disclaimer, although I do still use and make my own hair oil as well as other hair care products, the only thing I am currently selling on my website is hair bunnies. The first thing you want to do is find some product containers. For my twisting butter, I use these 8 ounce plastic amber jars and for my oil, I use these 4 ounce amber glass bottles. To get the label dimensions, I found two products around my home that were in the same size containers and then I just got those measurements with my tape measure and wrote those measurements down. I will be putting those measurements on the screen here in just a second, but real quick, if you guys are an iPhone user, please go to the App Store and type the name Funto, P-H-O-N-T-O. No, this video is not sponsored, but that is the app I will be using to customize these product labels. After you have downloaded the Funto app, go ahead and open it up. Hey loves, I know that some parts of this demonstration will go by fast, but when editing this part of the video, I did try my best to be very detailed by putting words and arrows on the screen, and I will also be chiming in to be more descriptive. If you guys want to, you can mute the sound of this video and just watch. I know that I learn better this way, and some of you may learn better this way as well. And also, if you guys have any questions at any time, please leave a comment below. I try my best to respond to all of you guys' comments. When customizing the size in Funto, the app only lets you do whole numbers, so instead of doing 6x2.5, I did 6x2. When you are choosing the colors for your labels, keep the color scheme of your brand in mind. You should already have your label saved somewhere as a PNG or with a transparent background. There is no certain way to size your logo or your words because we already have the right label dimensions. Just make sure that everything fits and is lined up to your liking. All of these functions are very important. Number one, the text button allows you to edit your text. The font button allows you to change your font. The style button allows you to adjust the appearance of your text, such as add a border or a shadow behind your text. The size button allows you to size everything to your liking. The tilt button allows you to make things appear sideways or diagonal. And the move button allows you to use mini arrows to move your text or images around so that you don't have to use your small or large fingers. There are four crucial parts to a handmade product label. Those four parts should be your logo or business name, the product name, the instructions on how to use the product, and the list of ingredients. Make sure that you list all of the ingredients so that your customer won't purchase anything that they are allergic to.
Now, this is where the tilt function comes in. I tilted the instructions as well as the ingredients to a 90 degree angle. I also sized it small enough so that the words would not fall off the label. If the words are too long, make two lines instead of one. Do the same thing for the instructions and when it is time to save it, I'll chime back in. To save this label and to begin your next label, please follow the arrows that are on the screen. For the second label, I know that it says 8.5 by 2.5, but I did have to make the width 9 and the height 2. But don't worry about the sizing this time around because in the next step, we will be resizing it again. I will try not to speed during this label, but after everything is sized to your liking and positioned how you like it, save the label and then we will move on to the next step. So this time around, I didn't save the image. I just went to Gmail to email it to myself. And then I went back and emailed the first label to myself as well. Now that we have our labels customized, it is now time to go to Google Docs so that we can resize them again and get them prepared to print. Make sure that you already have the photos that you emailed to yourself downloaded to your laptop. And then when you open Google Docs, make sure you're on a blank page and then insert those photos inside of Google Docs. When you get to Google Docs and you have your photo uploaded, make sure that you turn it sideways so that way when we resize it, it won't fall off the page and everything will fit on one page. To resize it, go to Image Options and then go to Size and Rotation. When you resize it, make sure that that blue check is actually not a blue check. You do want to unselect that so that way when you size it, you actually get to put your exact measurements instead of letting the system choose your measurements for you. Now, as you see, this first label was pretty long. So that's why I was saying to make it sideways so that it would fit on the long side of the paper. 
So I actually did not turn this label sideways because it did fit on the paper even with me resizing it. But to be honest, you guys can turn it sideways if you want to. But I will not turn it sideways because this way I can fit more than one label onto one sheet of paper. This is the label paper that I mentioned in one of my previous videos, which will be linked above in the I cards. But with this paper, it is kind of tricky and it varies from printer to printer. But with my printer, I make sure that the rough side is facing up. To print your labels, click the printer icon in the left hand corner and then click print again in blue. I always do a test run and try to peel your paper back just to make sure that it printed on the correct side. Now when it comes to cutting these labels, you can do one of many ways. Me personally, I use my Cricut machine and my Cricut machine cuts it for me. But you guys also have the option to use scissors and you have the option to use a Cricut portable trimmer. Let me just tell y'all, this first attempt with these large scissors was a fail, but you guys will see me reprint it in just a second. If you're going to use scissors, I encourage you to use some small, sharp scissors, but um, I really prefer to use the paper trimmer and the Cricut to get the most accurate cut. And this part of the video is in real time. You guys do want to take your time when cutting these labels because you do not want them to be uneven or crooked. And as always, everything I use will be linked below in the description box. I also want to mention that my business is handmade. I do not take my products to any factory to get made or anything like that. So that is why I have no problem with doing handmade labels as well. Now this is the second attempt you guys and I promise you it did turn out way better. Yes, y'all, I had to pull out the glasses to get an accurate cut. Also, this is the Cricut Portable Trimmer that I was referring to earlier, but I will also insert here on the screen of another trimmer that you guys can purchase if you're not into the Cricut brand. Now, this looks so much better, and don't worry about the raggedy edges because once we peel the top layer off, you won't even notice it. Now I'm just repeating the same steps that I did with the first label. Here's a comparison of my first attempt and my second attempt. And I also wanna pause you guys right here because if you are interested in making your label waterproof, all proof and smudge proof, you will have to click off this video and go check out my other video on how to do that process. But um, after you watch that video or if you have already seen that video, please come back to this video and you will see the applying process on the oil bottle and the twisting butter. Normally, I would take an alcohol pad and clean the bottle before applying the label, but since this bottle does have a lot of sticky residue on it, I will be skipping that in this step. To apply the label, just peel the backing off just like a sticker. 
It is better to apply the label when the container is standing up instead of laying down like I had it at first. The applying process requires a lot of patience, so you guys please take your time. And also, there will be trial and error. So do not be afraid to place the label on and take it off until you make sure that it is on there the way that you want it. These are the alcohol pads I used and I got them from Walmart and I'll be sure to link them below in the description box. And after wiping your container down with the alcohol pads, make sure that the container is completely dry before trying to apply your label onto it. So guys, your labels will not always come out perfect, but make sure that your customer is aware that this is a handmade product business and that you do hand make your labels so that they, they will not always get a perfect label each time, but please try to make it look as presentable and as professional as possible. Nine times out of 10, your customer may not even notice your tiny imperfections, but just try to do your best no matter what and make sure that the product inside the container is all worth it. Now right here, I decided to use the other label that I had on hand that I cut with scissors the first time because I did want this label to be a little shorter, but you guys also do not be afraid to reprint and start over. Here's the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this video. As always, don't forget to educate, encourage, and empower by sharing this video. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.